Hello, it's Sarah. And today, let me just put this away. I just figured I'd turn the camera on. I'm playing with paper. This is what's left of my Steampunk Spells Graphic 45. Gotta love it. Uh, this came out, let's see if there's a date. 2013. Um, and I want to do a little mini album tin. So it's based on, um, I did a share of a couple that I need and I, I don't have them anymore. I sold them. The, the tutorial I saw was by Mary at, um, she's from Cards TV, but I think it's Card Crazy 09 and it's a so many mini albums blog hop she did, but she did a little Christmas mini album in an Altoid tin. And so that's what this is, what I'm thinking of making is based on. So she has a little accordion style mini album inside of a tin and then you decorate it any way you want to. So because I'm in steampunk mode at the moment and it is Halloween or right around the corner, uh, I dug out my steampunk spells and I'm so happy because I have a lot of juicy papers here. I have a lot of good stuff that I can use. Um, I've pulled a couple different ones. I've just pulled some of my steampunk stuff that I've had forever and um, I've started cutting what I'm going to use but I figured let me turn on the camera. Oh, I also have um, the, let's see, let's see, this is the 8x8 eight eight steampunk spells, right? It's 8x8? Eight eight? Pretty sure. So I have some smaller, it's basically, it's the same as the 12x12 12 12, but in a smaller version. So this one would work especially for, well, for the Altoid, the small Altoids tin. Um, also, I had these in my stash, so I'm trying to use what I have, guys, and that's a thing. So I will put links in the description box for this specific tin that has the clear um, plastic top. I'm not sure if you can get it in solid in this size. This is about a five by five by three and a half. 5x4, five 5x3.5. By by I had them in my stash because I was doing these um, altered tins with Lori Moore. I'm pretty sure she's Art from the Heart because she had a, uh, I think it was on her blog. Anyway, working with the alcohol inks and everything on this metal um, to alter it. And I have my steampunk one. I shared this um, on when I showed my um, art doll my steampunk art doll. And so with this in mind, I thought, yeah, but I can do this and add a little mini album to the inside. Lori just had us um, kind of embellish with different ephemera and different things, anything you really wanted to do. So, um, but like I said, I'm going to use this paper stack. And what I'm, what I find is you can actually fussy cut and use the paper as your as your decorations as well. So I've cut out a few things ahead of time. I'm not sure where I'm going with this yet. The only thing I've done is kind of made my prototype. I'm going to make another one um, for, this is actually going to be the mini album. And it's the same amount of pages as the one that uh, Mary does for the little Altoids tin. But I think you could probably add a few more, even if these were embellished. There's a lot of room left in this tin. Like the, it could it could really be a little fatter, but I think I'm gonna leave it. Right now I think it's about six pages. Um, so I'm gonna show you how I made that. All I've done is uh, Lori used alcohol ink to turn the color of the tin. Now because steampunk is metal, you're good to go with the metal. You can just leave it with the, the silvery color aluminum or whatever it is. I think I'm going to cover the tin with paper um, and then I just decided to use a sharpie because I didn't feel like getting alcohol inks out and getting all messy. This is probably from the dollar store. It's just the chisel tip super thick sharpie and um, I just went around the top because it's more of a narrow space and I just thought that would make a neat frame and then I may add, I'm going to add stuff to this. I really don't know where I'm going. But like, see, this is from the paper stack. You can add, I could pop this up and put it up there. Now the only thing is when you open it, you do see, like look at this, you do see the underside. 
<laughs> I don't know why it's not opening. There we go. You see the back of all the stuff that you glue. So if that bothers you, I would cut a little piece of paper right here and just cover that, which I could easily have done. Um, you know, and you would just see a decorative paper there instead of the back of all your stuff. So we'll see how it goes. So I'm going to put a link. Th these I got from uh, a website called Specialty Bottle, and they're very inexpensive. So I may even order a couple more, and if this goes well, I may make them for holiday gifts and things. Um, so the first thing we're going to do, I'm going to set this aside. I was cutting paper to cover. Yeah, I think I'm going to do that, but we'll get to that in a minute. Um, each of the pages, the book pages. Uh, the first thing I did and I decided to use was, you guys know me and my file folders, right? These are the cheapy ones that you get at the dollar store. And they're definitely a more flimsy material, but it's actually really close to cardstock. And what I liked about it was it's, let's see, which way does this go? It is 16, 17 and a half inches long. So instead of using a 12 inch piece of cardstock, you have another how many ever inches, right? So what I decided to do, I don't really need this, I'm going to take it off, um, was cut this and you know what, I'm going to switch blades because I just put a new blade in here. Yay, okay. I just want to switch blades because I'm going to cut through a couple layers of this file folder and it's, it wants to be five inches tall so because this tin is actually I measured it so I measured it like this if you go across it's about five and a quarter so let me see what my prototype was five yeah I figured leave an eighth of an inch on both sides so we're gonna cut this at five inches so I'm just gonna line this up and I'm going right through both sides of the file folder. And it's thin enough that you can do that. I'm going to do it twice. I think I'm going to flip it. And get two pieces. Because we're going to adhere these together. Let me switch my blade back because this is duller. I just put a sharp blade in here that I'm going to cut my paper with. So I have these two pieces. And try and clear my table. I have my Martha Stewart, I haven't paper crafted in a while so I'm not sure where everything is. This is called a scoreboard, right? And I'm going to score, I think it's three and a quarter inches is how wide I want each page to be. So let's double check, yeah, three and a quarter. So you want your book to end up being five inches tall by three and a quarter inches wide. And I made six pages, so you'll see. One, two, three, four, five, six. And obviously I start with it opening to the left like you would do reading a book. And it turns out perfect because this side, when we adhere it to the um, tin, needs to be this way because it folds back in the tin. I'll show you. So basically we want to come away with six, one, two, six pages available to, to use. So I'm just going to go in. Now here's how I did this. We already have this crease in the middle, right? So I'm going to score working away from that. I'm not going to start at the beginning, so it may confuse you. I'm not sure. I might just do it this way. I'm going to use my little scoring tool and go three and a quarter. See how this paper is very thin, and then this would be what, six and a half. Yeah, so now I need to just go over those and make sure they're nice and scored. So you just want to make, and don't push too hard because it will rip. This is really thin, um, it's kind of like cardstock but it's a file folder from the dollar store. And I'm just reinforcing these. I can't really see what I'm doing. This one isn't 
I'm going to actually cut this one off, I think. These get cut off anyway. But the reason I did that was because this one's already so such a substantial fold. You take your bone folder and really give that a good crease. And then you're going to uh, mountain valley, mountain valley. So mountain valley, mountain valley. Accordion style fold it, right? And get your creases nice and flat and so we have that okay nice and neat and straight see I, I'm liking this already my other one is so wonky we're gonna do the same thing to this one and then when you're done you're gonna adhere them together so I'll be right back okay so you have two of these Mountain Valley, Mountain Valley, and you have the ends of your file folder, and we're going to cut those off. And I was thinking, even, you could leave them, and it would look like a cool, uh, it could be cool if you wanted to do that, have a, a different type of uh, mini album cover shape. But I did decide to cut mine off. Um, I think, you know what, let's use my paper cutter, although I don't want it to be dulling down my thing but I think my lines might be straighter and see what happens if you have a dull blade it pulls the it rips the paper sometimes I like to start in the middle so I'll push down oh, yeah this is really tearing it up <laughs> oh boy it's okay maybe I'll end up roughing up my edges but I just think it's the straightest way to get a good straight line as I tear up my pieces there we go Gent gentle be gentle All right now I want to show you something if you just cut off those ends it's not enough you want actually you want four and three because we're gonna connect two of these let's see this way to make that to get yourself that many pages so one two three four five six you have an extra piece now you could leave that on there I'm gonna glue it with it on there and show you why you don't need that extra piece it has to be um, an even number of pieces and it just so happens that the, the this paper doesn't reach to eight so we have seven so let me show you. So I'm going to use some of this. Um, I happen to have this from when I did my, um, I ordered this on Amazon, the, the Sook Wang tape, whatever tape this is called, that really strong tape, right? Uh, Alicia Hard Art, the metal, the pewter I was doing, she uses this to adhere her metal to the boards. So I had some, so I am going to make sure you do this on the right sides. So. I want to adhere this to this, and you could do it this way too. Let's see if I want to do that. No, I think I want to do it this way. So I'm going to make an X on here and an X over here. That's where I want to adhere so that it stays mountain valley, mountain valley. Okay? So I am going to try and put a piece of this tape, which it's so big, it's a little clumpy to work with. But I'm going to cut it off to give me a, sometimes I leave it on the roll, but I think I'm going to cut this off because it just makes it easier to line it up. And I want to get as close to this edge, to this um, seam as I can. And just, it's very sticky. Try and set it down right on that line. Take your bone folder again, and I like to just really squeeze any air bubbles out of there and we're going to do the same thing uh, I actually have this really thin one but I'm, I'm going to use this and I'll just cut it uh, you know what I could do instead of wasting it I'll do this I'll just push it I think it's just fluff I'll push this right up again I'll butt up against it and I'll cut it off and then I'm wasting it anyway see let's cut that off and 
and try putting this And again, just use your bone folder and make sure you have a good adhesion there. Then I'm going to pull all this. Well, first I should cut this too. I got to cut this off the edges. I got to make sure I'm not in the shadow. So yeah, just cut it away from the edges. This stuff is really good, but it's tricky because what I did on this one, and you'll see, when I connected them, I did not get it all the way up to the line, so it, it made it wonky. And then I just kind of fudged it. I mean, it'll work. It'll be fine, but I really wanted the second chance to try it and do it uh, straight this time and I could actually and I might I'm gonna pull these little uh, pieces off and I'm gonna put a little piece of this thin stuff right in the middle so I don't have any place unsticky and just overkill right uh, pull this off So super sticky. Where's my X? Okay, so this X is going to go on top of this X. I really want to make sure that this funky edge that I cut and this goes, actually, do I want to do that? I kind of think I want to do this. Anyway, X to X. All right, guys. So just try and get it as straight as you can without sticking it down first. So use your fingers to butt it up against that line and make sure it's going to be straight on the sides too. So along these edges. It's a bit of a, you know, but listen, it's not the end of the world if it's a little off at all. But this one's much better than the first one I did. So just going to use my bone folder again. And hope we still have, yes, Peak Valley, Peak Valley. Okay, now let me show you why it's important that we have, uh, oh, there's a little bit of glue there. See, there's a little glue over there. So, because that's where I just cut the edge of that. We'll cover it with paper. No worries. I want to show you why it's important that there's only six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Because this seventh piece, when we go to put it inside the mini album, and it would go this way, I mean inside the tin, this is the front of our book. You want it to kind of be in there like a book, so you pull it out like this. This piece needs to be at the edge, like this. And in order for it to fold back in, it won't fold back in. We need to cut this off. Just believe me. <laughs> It doesn't work the other way. So we're going to cut this off gently. Uh, that's as gentle as it gets for me. And now we'll be able to do what, I'm, what I was saying. So we're going to... We have to cut some ribbon. So I haven't even found the ribbon I'm using yet or any of that stuff. But before you start to embellish... See, look. When you put this on, let me show you, right here. Here's my book. I pull it out and it opens like this and it adheres onto here like this. You're gonna have a little piece of ribbon that holds your book onto the, onto the tin. And then when you're ready to fold it up, you just pick it up and it will fold back in like so, all right? That's why you need six pages or eight. You could do it with eight, ten, as many as you want after that. And, the, and all I would say is take another piece of file folder 
and add another piece just the way we did just there if you want to add more pages. So just stick it to this one and then cut it off so that you have uh, an even number, 8, 10, how many ever pages, and it should work. Okay? The other thing you want to do is you're going to use your corner chomper, and I happen to have this one by We Are Memory Keepers. It's a Cropodile um, product. Crop a corner. So it's a very strong corner chomper. Some of them, maybe you'll just have to do one at a time if you only have a corner rounder and just, you know, do that. But I think it will fit much better in the tin if you round all your corners. And that's what Mary did too. Mary did that. Um, I don't know her last name. Cards TV. She uses the, uh, the Cricut a lot. And I learned a lot from watching her videos. She's awesome. So now that you have all your corners rounded, you have your little mini album. So that's all ready to go, okay? So the next thing we're going to do is, and what this is what I was preparing as I turned on the camera. I wasn't sure about, um, where did I put my other one? This one. I had kind of, I just used the magic marker to make the edges. Instead of using ink, because I knew, like, I just wanted to save it, and this would do the same thing. I just wanted to darken my edges so that when I added paper. Um, but... I don't really, these aren't exactly the right size anyway, so they're going to be, if I put these on, they're too small, and I didn't want to use, these are from, I'm not sure if these are from the, the 8 inch, so what I, I decided to do was just use this paper, because I have, I have enough to cover it all. Um, and since it is going to be a mini album, you're just going to cover, you're going to put pictures over it. And I know it is a lot of paper to use for really for just covering something that you're going to put a picture on. But I want to do that. I'm going to do it. So you're going to need, let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 12 pieces. And so far I have 2, 4, 6, I'm going to have just enough paper to get 12 pieces, and I think I'm going to go every other. So I'm going to do it like this. I'm going to cover this one with this, and I'm going to flip it and do that, I think. And I'm not sure if I want as much orange, because I really like the blue, too. I was thinking I was going to use that teal color as an accent, and I can't hold on. This paper right here, this one. Or, no, that, not that one. I might use this one instead. But it has flowers, which I don't mind. This one. I might cover the tin with this one. I don't know. I can't decide. I think I'm going with the darker... I might cover the tin with this one. That's what I should do. So if I do that, then I've already wasted, because do I have two pieces of this? Yeah. Huh. I really like that, and I really like this one, too. Where the heck is it? Right here. Wait. This one I really like, and... I already pulled them out and I forgot. Look at that blue. See, I could use that, but look, that's got her on it, and I really don't want to cut that one up. But I love that blue. See, this is just her on the back. Um, this one. I really like this one. I only have one of these. But see, it says steampunk. It has a corset with wings. It has all the cool stuff. Actually, these two really go together nice. I think I like these two for the mini album. And then I'll figure out something to put on the outside. I think I'm going to cover the mini album with these two. So that's part of the decision making, right? 
so what I what I was going with was this one I like I like this one a lot but we'll see what I do with that all right so for these I'm gonna use these two corner round them and you can ink all your edges if you're an edge inker I may and I may not we'll see it's a lot of extra work <clears throat> but I think I have to. But you want to adhere these to cover up your photo, your mini album, um, your, what is this called? File folder, right? So let's see. Yeah, I think this is gonna look good. I really like this paper. So I'm gonna go away and I'm gonna cut all of these down to, what is it? Three and five by five by three and a quarter and I'll be back so I cut everything uh, corner rounded and I've organized to where I'm good with where they're gonna go and I'm gonna adhere these with my ATG gun and this is called the advanced tape glider it's a product made by scotch it's one of the very first things I got when I started paper crafting and I haven't used it in a while so I'm going to probably have to reload it here in a minute. But it's a very handy tool. I like to use the other adhesive that's my favorite is the Scotch Quick Dry Adhesive, which is um, a glue. But I'm going to do this. So I'm just going to put this. It's a double stick tape along all the edges. And then just a little like X, X in the middle. I'm going to line this up. as best you can and just push it down now I'm wondering if it's going to be an issue when you fold it up hey you're gonna you're gonna find out with me now you can also do this piece of paper you could do this the same way but for some reason I'm choosing to put it on the file folder instead of on the back of the paper which it might be easier to put it on the paper and again, make sure you're doing the right side. Line it up. Press it down. See, look, that overlapped a little bit. So I'm not sure that this is going to be um, as cozy of, maybe I should trim them down an eighth of an inch. Because, you see what I'm saying like this? needs to be trimmed right here and so it might be better to not cut it the exact size of this see look even this is like got a little overhang but cut it like an eighth of an inch smaller I think I'm gonna go back and do that I'm going to go back and instead of cutting these all to uh, three and a quarter by five, I'm going to cut them to three and one eighth by four and, uh, what would it be? Four and seven eighths. So I'm just taking a smidge off two sides. So I, I don't think, I have a guillotine but I don't really trust it. Let me go see. I'm not a real expert when it comes to this thing. I have actually not used it very much. And I don't even think I have a... Th oh, yes, I do. So let's see. How many papers? I'm going to go with three at a time. I'm going to put them in here and line this up over here at like four and seven eighths. And let's see if it does it did it and then the same thing on this side we're gonna go what did I say instead of three and a quarter uh, three and uh, whatever one eighth maybe see this isn't like it's not easy to hold but let's see so that's three and a quarter. I'm going to go to like 
one eighth under. So three and one, two, three eighths. Let's see what happens. Maybe I'm supposed to hold this. Yeah, I think I am. Ah, that was much more steady. Then I'm going to have to corner around these again. And we'll see if they fit better. They should. They should fit better. And then when I like round the edges, I mean not round the edges, when I um, ink the edges, we'll cover up that, that mark. But yeah, this is all overhangy and I don't like that. So see my second one. This is why when I create, I like to make one ahead of time before I do the tutorial, but that's, you know, a little too much work. Then I'd have to make a whole nother one, another whole nother video. All right, so let's see, where was I? We're gonna need a piece of this. Yeah, it's a smidge under. Now well, that one seems to fit. Oh, I didn't cut this one yet. <laughs> No wonder. All right, let's just do it. We'll go for it. And I'll put the uh, the tape on this piece this time. Oh, fell off. Take it easy. And Mary didn't have all these troubles, you guys. So if you want to just go watch hers, yeah, see I'm leaving all this, I'm going to try and, I want to trim this, that tape is so sticky. Alright, so I'm going to go away, I'm going to trim everything to, I guess it's an eighth of an inch smaller. And I'm going to glue this whole thing down. All right, and then I'll be back. Okay, I messed up, and I want to show you what I did. Uh, just don't adhere your mats to the back. Let's see. So when you open your book up, this one, you don't want to adhere a mat to this one, because that's going to get, you're going to have to put some, um, ribbon on that. It's going to fold back in and don't adhere a mat to your very cover page because we're going to put a little tab, a ribbon tab on that one too. So it's the two end bits on the front piece, okay? So the two, you can't see it, the two end bits. All right, and I think I am going to reuse this, this mat I'm going to reuse. I'm not sure about this one because it did get kind of this is the front cover, and I think I actually want to change that to this book of spells. I think I'm going to try and cut this down to be to where it says book of spells, and I'm going to use that as my cover. I could also use this All Hallows Eve, or I could use her, but I think I'm going to put her on top of here. So that's what I'm going to do and those of you who are working with the steampunk spells you can do it that way too or you can create your own version and I don't think I have any of those in here yeah I did here they are these little see here's the book of spells but it's too small but I kind of like it maybe I'll put it on top of this. I don't know. I haven't decided. All right, but the first thing you want to do, actually, I think I'm going to decide and I'm going to come back and you're going to need some ribbon for the next step. So find some ribbon. Okay. So I've decided on the papers I want to use for inside the box and on the back and front of my little mini album and they're here. I also cut two pieces of ribbon at six inches and one at three inches. And these are going to be the hinges and this is the little pull that we're going to use to pull the album out of the box. 
So first thing I'm going to do is take this score tape and I'm going to put a couple of pieces inside the box. Maybe like three or four. Because I'm going to use a good amount when I stick the uh, paper in there too. This is just to hold the ribbon in place before we put the paper. So I have that on there. I always like to um, burnish this tape just to make sure it didn't that it's that it's adhered well. Because this is tin and I don't know how well it adheres to tin. Then you're gonna have to pull off these little coverings. Backing, I should say, I don't know. And then well, this is my dry run here. I, I measured this at six inches. You want it to come out this way, and we're gonna be adhering the book to that. So I'm gonna move the book out of the way for a minute. And I just want to, I'm going to line it up with the hinges. That's what Mary did. So she puts this kind of going out from the hinges. Try to keep it pretty straight. And kind of press it down to that tape. I'm going to put this, a, ha a Halloween's Eve. Now, that I kind of measured it, but because I was using something that I wanted to center, it was harder to measure. Well, it wasn't harder to measure. I used this measurement on the back. I went with three and a quarter, or you could probably go with three and three-eighths by five and a quarter, but or five and one-eighth, but it ended up being smaller than that, and I did ink the edges of this. So I'm going to cover that with, I'm going to put a bunch more adhesive on the back of here. And I, I think the, the score tape would work really well too. I'm going to hold it this way and kind of just center it based on the size I did it with because mine's not, but I'm going to give that a good press. See, it's not centered at all, but it'll be good enough. It's cute enough. Now, to put the little um, wait, I'm going to set these aside for a sec. To put this little hit, uh, what is it? Like a pull tab, you just want to put it on, and then so let's see, I'm going to fold it in half. And then adhere it, let's see, make sure I'm doing this right. Yeah, um, adhere it to the end, end here. And I think I'm going to use my tiny attacher, which is a stapler. And then I'm going to cover that with paper anyway. But for right now, I am going to use my tiny attacher. I probably should have thought of that before I covered this. But maybe I'll put the pretty side of it on that side just to hold it in place. It's such a tiny little staple. Then I can uh, go ahead and cover this. And I've chosen a different paper to put on the front. I decided to go with this paper. I'm going to, yeah, I'm just gonna use my ATJ again. And I inked the edges. I decided to go with this paper because this is what you're gonna see through that window. So I went with this because I'm gonna, I already fussy cut out. Hopefully I've cut this the right size. It looks a little big. It's not my best, I haven't paper crafted in a long time, so forgive me. But it definitely seems like it's a little big. I'm gonna have to, yeah, uh, trim it. But I decided to fussy cut out one of the girls on the bikes from the paper line. I don't know why this turned out. 
I do know why. I do. I do know why. Um, don't cut your ribbon. But um, cut it the same mat, the size as all the mats. I don't have anything in front of me. I am completely winging this. All right. This little girl, where is she? Her. And I thought she would look nice with the blue background because that's kind of how the page is that has her right here. It has a blue background with the um, hot air balloons in the background. So I kind of chose, that's why I chose that to be, I'm just going to trim this a little off the bottom. And when I'm done, actually before I adhere this, I'm going to ink all the edges. I want to ink all these edges first. I think it'll make it easier, but this is what I'm going for. So once this is in here, this will be back in there. You have your pull tab. See how the pull tab sticks out? And that'll be what shows through the, the, the ribbons won't show. They'll be underneath. But then I'm going to put her on top right here. I just thought that looked nice. And I'll probably put like some gears and stuff like that on there. Um, but that's why I chose that little, it says, wishing you a happy Halloween. And then the bottom says, All Hallows Eve. So the next thing I'm going to do, I do want to um, ink all these edges, and I'm just using, I am using my Tim Holtz, um, I should say Ranger Distress Ink in the Black Noir, and I'm just going to go around the whole thing and dirty it up a bit. And you don't need to see me do this, really. I should have done it before I even put the ribbon on, but I'll be right back. Okay, so I inked everything. Now we're going to line this up about a quarter inch from the, I'm going to use my score tape again, and put some right on this piece of the photo album area. And you just need enough that it's going to stick to that um, ribbon. And I'm going to, of course, I always like to burnish. And then what was I going to put? I'm just going to use what I was going to use originally, This actually this one. So let me get that ready too. It still has some because I had to take it off, but I, I think I'm going to... Just make it extra sticky so that the because there's ribbon under there, I really want to make sure it'll adhere. And make sure you have it in the right direction. Yep. Alright, so this has to leave a, like a quarter inch of a gap. So you're going to line this up pretty centered. Now you want to make sure you're centered this way so that the book will fit in there. And leave about a quarter inch gap and then just gently press it down to the oopsie to the mini album and then we're going to adhere this on top of it I'm going to just tip this up um, and this should be the size that we did the, um, you know what, I'm going to turn it this way. This should be the size that we did the mats originally because this was, uh, so just place it accordingly. And I'm starting on this side and then I'll just smooth it and go right up to that ribbon. Giving it good pressure. Because this is what's going to hold your book into plate in the inside the tin, so we just want to make sure it's nice and substantial. All right, so here's how you, you're going to place. You're going to put your book back in. It'll fold. See how it folds this way first. That's why it's important that you do it only even numbers of pages, so that it'll fold back on itself nice and neat. And then you close it, and you have your little pull tab there to pick it up and pull it out. Okay, cute, so we did that successfully. 
I like it. All right, so that completes your little mini album. You have that in there. And you can always embellish, like I may embellish the cover a little bit. Um, probably I will. I don't think I'll embellish too much on the inside uh, because I think I'm going to put little pictures of Maya in her Halloween costumes in, on, in the mini album. So I'm going to keep it kind of plain for now. But I do know that I want to put her on the cover. And then this is what I was talking about. When you open it, you will see that. So maybe we might want to cut out or, or place other th other things here to cover her. You know, you could put something there. I'm not really worried about it. But when I was cutting this out, maybe I should have put a, a cute piece of paper back there. Like maybe just this, you know. This could cover it. But I already cut her out and it, I fussy cut it. You guys know what fussy cutting is, right? So I love my cutter bee scissors and you just cut and I also use an X-Acto bleed to get in these little nooks and crannies. And then you can also um, ink the edges too if you don't like any white edges showing, which I don't mind. And also, you know, you're not gonna rip her if you, you know, if you don't do that. But right along here, there's some, you could actually take uh, like a black pen of some type and run it along there, but I don't mind. I am going to figure out now what other types of embellishments I'm going to use. Oh, you know what we're going to do? I forgot about this. I've chosen this paper to cover the tin. I'm going to cover the whole entire tin with this paper and I'm just going to ink the edges with the black. So we're going to do that. That's another thing. So that I have that. Um, where'd my girl go? I threw her. So see, she, I think this is going to blend in, but I think I want to do hints of, you know, do I really want to use that or do I want to use this? This is so much brighter, but then inside it's kind of plain. But that was because I wanted to add pictures and keep it kind of plain. Huh. This is the hard part for me, the decision making. Um, and it's it's not a bad thing to, ha to have so many choices. But maybe I will use this. I might use this around this side and this on the back. They don't really match. I kind of like this for the outside. Um, I think I am going to use that. All right, I'm going to, you know what, let's just measure. Let's measure right now. I'm going to cut a piece of that to three and three-eighths by five and a quarter. Three and three-eighths by five and a quarter of this. So, one, two, three-eighths by five and a quarter. So I got to open my little arm here. Here's the quarter right here. Now let's see about these rounded edges. I have this. I think I'm going to use my quarter inch round first and see if that fits better. Because I have a quarter inch side and a half inch side. And I have a feeling this quarter inch side is going to be enough. It's not exact. So we'll go half and I'll have a little bit of a lip around the whole thing that I'll just use the, um, the black Sharpie. And I'll also, I'll ink these edges. be good so I think I may even do it I think I'm going to use this big piece again 
I don't think it's quite wide enough, but we'll pro I'll go half and half this way. And just line it up and this will just keep it from coming off the back or off the tin so lay that down cut another piece I think I'll put it to the edge of this side and then I think I'll put a little piece down the middle too, but I'm going to burnish, make sure it's on there, and then we have to cut along the edge of the paper just carefully so that we don't cut the paper. I just want to cut the glue, the adhesive. have to take the adhesive off your scissors or it doesn't want to cut right it's getting all sticky works much better without adhesive stuck to it and I am going to put a little piece down the middle I gotta wait. I'm gonna wait till I peel this off. So I'm gonna peel this off. And put a little piece down the middle. Super sticky. Then if you have a directional pattern on your paper, you want to make sure it's going in the direction. This doesn't have one, so I'm just going to line it up as best I can and make sure I'm not, uh, okay, that's it. It's going down. There's a little dent in the tip, like a, it dips down, so I kind of pushed it into the dip before I continued sticking it. I'm going to burnish it down a little bit and I think that's, I don't think that's going anywhere. So that's that and then I could put it along here too which I kind of want to do and just leave that blue as a pop of color inside. I think I'm going to just leave it. I'm going to put the Ouch, I got a pa I got a cut, a paper cut. Damn it. I'm gonna put this on the outside too. So I don't think uh, 12 inches is gonna fit, so I'm gonna need two pieces. So let's measure how wide this is. We gotta close the box and go from here to here. So I'm gonna go with three eighths of an inch. One, two, three eighths of an inch, and I'll cut a couple pieces because uh, we're going to need to attach or just overlap them. Uh, what did I say? Three. I like to go this way. There's a little measuring side over here, so this is actually two. I think this is three right here. Excuse me. I'll cut two little strips. Let me see if this is too small. Eh. I think it's a little small. I want to go wider. Uh, let's see. So this is kind of, I think this is a half an inch. Yeah, I definitely like that better. 
I'm going to put that on there. Let's see if it is. This is, uh, yeah, half an inch. So I'm going to cut two strips and a half an inch, which I won't need all of the rest of that one. <laughs> and I think I'm just going to put a uh, score tape. Should I put the score tape on here or on here? I think I should put it on here. I think I'm going to put it on the, the strips. I'm going to use this little thin one. So I'll go away and come back, but I'm going to put this right up against the edge. Don't pull too tight because then the whole thing's going to bend. And burnish that down. Oops. And then I'm going to peel it off and put the other side on because it, it's going to overlap. So this way you end up with only sticky stuff there. So you got to kind of, it's going to be sticking to me a little bit right up to the edge starting to uh. I haven't worked with these adhesives in so long it's kind of fun just burnish that down You know, I have all these cool uh, products, and it, it's fun to break them out again. And I should have inked these edges. It's fine. I don't care. All right, I'm going to close the box, and I'm going to start in the back. Actually, I'm going to start on the side so that the front doesn't have a... And I'm going to go right up against <clears throat> the lip of the can like I'll show you so right along this lip and then it it's kind of stopping right at the uh, bottom so I'm going to open it <clears throat> and so I'm just going to keep it straight along the bottom edge of the tin And just continue when you open it actually let's see oh, I think it'll be okay let's see see the tin closes right up to it and then you can just take your because I have the stickiness is all the way to the edge of that just burnish your the paper up against the tin and then I'm going to ink those edges after this. So I don't need a whole big piece. Let's see. <clears throat> this actually, the back, seems like the hinges. Maybe I'll, I should make a notch for the hinges. But I'm only going to need like this much. What should I do about those hinges? Let me see. Yeah, I think you, I need to make a notch for my hinges. So I'm going to make sure that I have plenty of room and I'm going to mark where the hinges are. With just a pen, and I'm going to use my X-Acto blade and make a little notch there. Uh, see ya. You guys can't see them, but I can see them. Just barely. And then I'll make a little box like that. And that should make way for those hinges to open and close. 
So when I stick this down, hmm, it still seems a little wider than the other strip did. So maybe I'll cut this a smidge. Well, it's a half an inch. I'm going to go for it. All right, so I'll be back. I'm going to do the same thing I just did. So I added the tape the same way I did to the other strips and just cut out the notches. And then I'm going to line this up with the notches first. Really trying to butt it right up against the uh, tin, the top of the tin. And that's it. Burnish it down. Around the corners the tin kind of bends in. So just push it down. I like it. Now I could take my Sharpie, which I think I kind of want to do. I think I am going to do that and I'm going to just touch the tin right uh, try not to get see that what happens is you're you're going to end up going over and putting a big line across your paper if you're not careful which I'm not always careful and it does happen but this is an option just to get that same black line that you have on your lid I mean, maybe it would have been safer to do this before we put the paper on, you know, but this is my first one I'm doing, so I decided to do it this way. I wing it a lot, like I'm not a perfectionist, I mean, in a way I am, I always say that, but in this type of stuff, I'm definitely a good enough, like as long as it looks, oops, see I just did that right on the paper. As long as it looks good enough, I'm happy with it. I will be very, very happy. Oopsie, see I went right on there. All right, good. But it's a dark paper, so it didn't even show up. I like that though. And like I said, it's silver, so steampunk and all that stuff goes right along with that theme, so it doesn't have to be black but I kind of like it so I'm done guys this is done we have a little photo album in a tin and now I just have to have fun and embellishment embellishment yeah embellish it so I'm gonna put her here I think I'm gonna put her in the window like with her wings stopping there and then I'm gonna embellish I have to go gather up some things for my little steampunk stash, I'll clean off all the paper. And I'll be back with a part two. All right, because I'm going to go eat some stew. And that rhymed. All right, you guys. Thanks for watching.